things like sea stars and sea cucumbers and sea urchins, lots of different kinds of animals will be found in this phylum. So how do they get their name Echinodermata? Okay, Echino means hedgehog. Do you guys know what a hedgehog is? It's a land animal. Sonic the hedgehog. Okay, yeah. What is a what does a hedgehog look like? Spiny. It's very spiny. Yes. So um, yes, like a porcupine kind of. Um, so Echinodermata get it gets its name hedgehog skin because they have spiny skin. Okay, so they have spines on their skin, um, and so they have head spiny skin, and they live in both benthic. Uh, sorry, they live in benthic sediments, both hard and soft. So you will find echinoderms from like the intertidal zone all the way down to the deep sea on the floor. Okay, so they're found everywhere um, in the ocean, and you're going to be walking around on the bottom, eating stuff off of the bottom. Um, their symmetry is a special type of symmetry. It's called pentamerous symmetry, or pentaradial symmetry is another term that you'll hear for it. Um, it's basically like a type of radial symmetry based on powers of five. Okay, so if you take your sea star okay, and you divide it in half this way, okay, you have mirror images, right? Okay, um, and if you divide it in half this way, you have mirror images, right? And this way, and this way, and this way. Um, but if I divided it in half this way, do I have mirror images? No. So it's radial symmetry based on powers of five. So a sea star, you can only divide five ways and still get mirror images. There are sea stars with six legs that typically happens um, if they lose one and then grow it, grow it back. They grow like two sometimes, but uh, inside, like they'll have it's pentaradial, so based on powers of five. The ones with six, a little bit of an exception. Yeah. The one on the right is that a real pentaradial? It's also pentaradial. This is a sea urchin. You'll um, I'll do a sample dissection for you, and you'll see. I'll open it up, and you'll see there's it's actually pentaradial symmetry inside. Um, you can't you can't see it because of the spikes, but. It does have pentaradial symmetry as well. Okay, so pentamerous symmetry. Um, the characteristics of the phylum. So just like last time, um, you're going to need to know those phylum characteristics. And then there are five classes of echinoderms that we're going to talk about. And so you're going to need to know the class characteristics for those as well. Okay, so um, your common phylum characteristics: the skin is spiny. Okay, tough skin with spines, um, and sometimes. Most of the time, the spines are pretty obvious, but sometimes they may not be super obvious. They may have internal spines, but they do have spines. Um, they've also got these cool things called pedicellaria. Okay, so pedicellaria are like pincher-like spines. So they're like little spines that have pinchers on them, and they'll be used for a variety of different things. Um, they can be used for defense. So if something's trying to go and like eat the sea star or whatever, um, then it, these little pedicellaria can pinch. Um, the predator and try and defend itself. Um, it can also be used to clean the dorsal side of the animal, so the side that's facing up into the water column. Uh, spores of algae and other animals will try and settle onto the sea, sea star, and these little pedicellaria can like pick them up and toss them off, all right, and clean the dorsal side of the animal. Um, they can also be used for food capture, so sometimes they can capture little pieces of food in those pedicellaria and then pass it down into the mouth, and they will use them for food as well. Um, and let's see. I will show you. There's, I have a couple of videos on the next slide to show you about that. All right. They also have a water vascular system. So that's their other one of their other characteristics, a water vascular system. Um, it's kind of like a hydrostatic skeleton. All right. So you remember when we talked about worms and worms' hydrostatic skeletons? Yeah. Um, and so worms, they could change the shape of the water, right, but not the volume of the water that's in their coelom, yes? Okay, so um, sea stars depend on that same kind of thing, the being, being able to change the shape of the water, but not the volume of the water. Um, and so they have water inside of their bodies, inside of this system called the water vascular system, and they will have muscles and stuff that they'll use to move the water around to help them to move, okay? So you have three major parts of the water vascular system. You've got the sieve plate, okay, or the madreporite plate, the radial canals, and then the tube feet, okay? So um, when you do your dissection of your sea star, you'll actually see the madreporite plate or the sieve plate on the outside of the sea star in the middle, 
it looks kind of like a bald spot. Okay, and that's actually where water is going to enter into the water vascular system. Okay, so seawater can enter into the sea star's water vascular system through this little madreporite plate. Um, water comes in through this little ring canal that runs around the middle of the sea star, and then you've got radial canals that run down each of the arms okay, of the sea star. Um, and then attached to those, you've got little ampullae and then tube feet. Okay, and they can move the water inside of that water vascular system, move their little tube feet, and walk around. All right? Um, <coughs> and inside of that water vascular system, they can also transport some nutrients and stuff like that as well. So, kind of cool. They're also really good at growing back body parts. So, they have a really good regenerative ability. You can actually take a sea star, and if you cut off one of the arms, okay, um, that sea star can grow that arm back. All right? Actually, um, some sea stars are so good at this. If they take, if you take and like cut off part of the arm, and uh, that arm has part of the central disc on it, um, that whole arm can then grow into a new sea star. Okay, just depends on the the type. But just a little piece of it, that would just grow, the sea star would grow it back. The whole arm with part of the central disc could grow into a new sea star. So um, you also have some kinds of echinoderms that can grow back their internal organs. So some kinds of echinoderms will do what's called the evisceration and they'll actually spit up their internal organs. Um, yeah, and then they'll regrow them. So we'll talk more about that too. Okay, here's some pictures for you. Um, so these are the pedicillaria. So uh, here's like the spines, right? And then the little pinchers, okay, little pinchers. Um, and here's like another type of pincher. So it just depends on the kind of sea star or echinoderm, what those look like. Okay, and then here's the water vascular system. So here's the madreporite plate that would be on the outside of the body. Okay, okay, um, and then the, your ring canal, okay, and then your radial canals that run down each arm. And then these are the ampulla, and then your tube feet. Okay, and then these are the tube feet sticking out of the body of the sea star. So what they'll actually do is the water inside here, you've got muscles that are around these little ampulla, and they'll squeeze and put the water into the tube feet and extend the tube feet and then when they relax, water comes back up and the tube feet don't, are uh, withdrawn. Does that make sense? So they can extend those tube feet and use those tube feet to walk and move around. Not very fast, but they can move around. Oh, video. So, So this, um, some of the pedicillaria can actually be uh, venomous. So these are, of course they can, yes. So this is like uh, what a pedicillaria would look like if it's like biting your foot and then the poison sacs are here and they would eject the toxin into your, into your foot if you stepped on it. So that's what that looks like. Um, and then, and then here, so you can kind of see the little pedicillaria like right there. Right? And then this is like a close-up of it, so you can actually see the little like pinchers moving around. See that? Right? Close up. Uh, no. Yeah, it hurts. And like the, um, so it's not gonna like die, like kill you, but it's gonna be, you know, painful. And only some kinds of like sea urchins and stuff like that are toxic, have any sort of poison. Really, when you step on a sea urchin, a lot of times the, the problem is the spines break off in your foot and then they get infected. So that's more of the problem. So, Okay, so this picture represents the echinoderm classes. Um, so you've got five classes, okay? Um, you've got Ophiuroidea, which includes things like your brittle stars. Uh, echinoidea, which are your sea urchins, ask 